Hey everyone, my name is Ira. Um, this is the next video in my Trans 101 series. I totally forgot how many videos it's been by now. Um, <clears throat> so, yesterday was my birthday, and I got this as a present. Um, both the board and the little easel, uh, which I literally just put together right now, so I can use it for you. <laughs> uh, and it's, isn't it? It's beautiful. Now I can give all of the lectures. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. Anyway, okay, so the gender binary. Um, there is the gender binary, and then I guess you could say there is the gender non-binary. Um, if you remember how we talked about what is normative versus what is normal, the gender binary is what is normative. So for those of you who don't know what the gender binary is, you actually do know what it is because it's how we teach about gender in the first place. You know, you have the female and the male counterpart. Um, and, and that's synonymous with man and woman. Uh, most people are binary gender identified, you know, man or woman. That includes trans people. This has nothing to do with whether or not someone is cisgender or transgender. And I want to be clear that a lot of people, when they first come into understanding queer theory and understanding, you know, transgender identities and politics and activism, one of the things that you'll see a lot of people ask is, well, why do you guys hate on men and women so much? And why do you hate on cisgender people so much and such and so forth? And, Here's the thing, it, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with identifying as a man or a woman. There's something and likewise there's nothing wrong with being cisgender. There's nothing wrong with being part of any privileged group. The thing that's wrong is creating an institution that makes a specific group of people privileged for nothing other than an identity that they hold. Does that make sense? Right, so that's pretty simple. Most people know what the gender binary is. They just don't know that it's often referred to as the gender binary. All right. And con conversely, or well, let's talk about something else. Um, so remember how in the second portion of the terms video we, um, I don't know if I went over it, I don't remember, but we talked about what cissexism is and we talked about what trans misogyny is. I do believe that we talked about we may have talked about binarism, but I just want to briefly go over it again. Look how clean this whiteboard is. Oh, that looks like an eight. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> um, binarism is the notion that people who identify as men, <laughs> as women, or as men are more important, more valid, more real, more legitimate, et cetera, than people who don't identify as women or as men or who identify as both or who only sometimes identify as either of those things. And the thing with binarism is that it often occurs in the transgender community as well. Um, oftentimes you'll see people who are binary identified uh, talking down about folks who do not identify as binary and so like they may not want all the same surgeries, they may not always want the same pronouns and such and so forth and so instead of criticizing the institution of cissexism and binarism that makes it so that um, so that, make, that makes it so that it's harder for trans people to medically transition if they do want to uh, or need to instead of criticizing that institution, what a lot of binary transgender folks will do is criticize non-binary transgender individuals as if it's their fault, when really they're all victims of the same um, thought process. But, uh, okay, so now that we know what the binary is, let's go over the non-binary. And we went over this a little bit in um, terms, non-binary meaning someone who does not always identify as a man or as a woman. Um, so someone like, here are some like non-binary gender identities. Uh, some folks may have already heard of these before. And I'm not going to necessarily get into what all of those, what all of these mean. Um, 
we, I also have another video that I'll link to, um, a lecture that I gave a little uh, in October, so you can check that out if you'd like. So there's bi-gender, there's genderqueer, hey, represent. <laughs> there's agender, there's neutroids, um, there is gender fuck, um, gender fluid, what up? and such and so forth. Um, there's a lot more. I don't, I don't want people who go away from this video to think, well, Ira taught me that there's actually now eight genders. <laughs> no, no, no. There's an infinite amount of genders, and they're always changing, and they're always shifting, and maybe in ten years some of these won't even exist anymore, and maybe, and maybe they'll exist for the rest of time, and have always existed. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, it's not like that here. There's an infinite amount of genders. And the thing with gender is that a different gender identity may mean something to one person and may mean something else to another person. How, how we talked about it and when we first discussed what is gender, right? Um, so by gender to one person may mean identifying as two genders at the same time all the time. Whereas to another person, it may mean going back and forth between two gender identities. Um, gender queer to one person may be that they perform their gender queerly, versus another person meaning that they don't identify as a man or a woman, but not necessarily in between those things either. To the third person, it might mean identifying exactly in between man and woman, whatever whatever that place is for them, um, and such and so forth. The best way to learn about these gender identities is to read about them from various experience-based writings, I would say. Um, and if, you know, and if a trans person nearby or that you come in contact with is willing to, to talk to you about, like, what their gender means to them, what their gender identity means to them, then, like, you could always ask. But at that same time, if you ask and they say, no, that's not something I'm comfortable sharing with you, you don't meet them with hostility and say, oh, hey, you're not teaching me or whatever, and I'm forcing you to be the form of educator right now, and such and so forth. No, trans people are just like any other person. We don't always necessarily want to educate people. But, uh, yeah, let's see if I... Um, in one of the videos that we've already gone over, um, we talked about the normative trans narrative and how that's damaging to people, the people who identify within the non-binary umbrella, right, these are people that you never hear about in the normative transgender narrative. And that's why this is particularly damaging, because all these folks exist, and if you're wondering where I exists in this scale. I guess I identify with, that looks like a fish, um, <laughs> I guess I identify with these terms. But, yeah. And, and some of these terms may apply to you and you may have never seen them before and you may want to go look up, look them up and see what they mean. But, um, yeah, I hope this was helpful. Sorry, I'm a little tired right now. Uh, if you have any questions, please, by all means, feel free to ask. If you have anything that you want to add, go ahead and add in the comments, as always. Um, if you want to contact me for whatever reason, uh, my website is www.iradaltongray.com, or you can email me at ira.d.gray at gmail.com. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. I will see you all soon.